is the kind of thing that is bracing me.
Awesome. Good morning, guys. Why don't you turn to uh, one or two people and say, good morning. It's good to see you. It is so good to see you guys. Um, why don't we all stand up? You guys look great with that extra hour of sleep. <laughs> Praise God. Wow, it's November already. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to start this morning just slow. I feel like Sunday morning sometimes can be so busy because we're trying to get here before 10. And um, people on live, you're waking up, trying to get settled. And um, yeah, I feel like this morning, let's just, let's not rush into it. Let's just enjoy this moment. God has been so good. It's November and this year has been full of curveballs. Amen. But he has been so good and so faithful. So the band's not going to do anything. They're just going to play. Actually, they're going to do something. They're going to play. Yeah, they're going to play. Um, so go ahead, do your thing, but we're just going to take like 30 seconds even, just catch your breath. You're here, you made it safe. I have like um, a notification every day that reminds me to breathe. And the reason why breathing is so important is because it is like one of the only exercises that we can do that causes us to be present in the moment because when you focus on your breathing, it's like happening with you in that moment. So why don't we all just take a deep breath in and out. Thank you, Jesus. And as you're focusing on your breathing, maybe think about why you're even here. Why are you in church today? what brought you here today. Um, in Revelation, there's a part where they're talking about the throne room. I think it's Revelation chapter 4. And um, it talks about the, the creatures, right? With eyes all over their body and like under their wings and just eyes everywhere. And this awesome worship leader named Rick Pino, he takes note of how, isn't it awesome how in the throne room, the only appropriate response to the beauty and to the glory of God is worship. That in the presence of the Lord, the only appropriate response, the only thing that we could muster to do is to worship. And so it says in Revelations that they give glory, they give honor, and they give thanks to the Lord in His presence in the throne room. And we prayed, we, oh, it was so awesome on uh, Friday we had outpouring and we prayed that um, heaven would come, heaven on earth as it, heaven on earth, what? I'm losing my words. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And I believe it can begin with our worship. Let's worship in this room this morning as it is in, in heaven. So you can just join me in welcoming him, however that looks like for you. You can just keep taking your breaths, slowing down. But Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, would you just fill this place? We invite you into this place, God. We have no other agenda, no other reason to be here other than you, other than to worship you, than to lift your name up. You are faithful, God. You are holy. You are King of kings. You have been so good to us. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Holy Spirit, just take part in what is happening here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Standing here in your presence. Thinking of the good things you have done Waiting here patiently Just to hear your still small voice again You're holy, righteous 
everybody knows this song. It's pretty old. I grew up singing this song. But how about we trade some sorrows today and put up joy in this house? How about, how, how, how do you feel about that? Can I get an amen? Come on. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on. I'm trading my sickness. Come on. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, see, I'm trading again. I'm trading my sorrows. Come on, you gotta dance with it. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Come on! Come on. Let's put some joy in this house. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, who wants that joy today? I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, one more time. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I impressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down but not destroyed. Come on, who's blessed? For his promise will endure. Yes, joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, but joy. Come on! I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. The praise goes up, the rain comes down. Come on, who wants some rain? The praise goes up, the rain comes down. Oh, we praise you, Lord. The rain comes down, the praise goes up. Come on, one more time. The rain comes down. The praise goes up, the rain comes down. The praise goes up, the rain comes down. Though the sorrow may last, come on! The joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my faith. Joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Who wants to say yes, Lord? Say yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, amen. Come on, there's a shout of praise to him today. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We worship you in this place. We worship yes, you in this place, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, thank you that you are on your throne, God. Thank you that you are King of Kings, Father. That you are constant, you are the same, you are faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Who's power? 
For you are on your throne 
Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship the Lord this morning. I just like to read this after what after which I will ask um, Daniel to lead us once again in this particular song after which um, we can continue with the with the set because I believe that there's there, there, there's, 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 there's a powerful powerful spirit right now in this place this is drawing God's people to worship and some of you need to hear this today those of you who are here but those of you as well who are joining us online and we welcome you this morning as we were singing this song, you are God alone in the good times and bad. <clears throat> the Lord just directed me to Psalm 11. And I'll read verse 4. All the way down to verse 7. The last, the last four verses. Of For the psalm it says, <clears throat> But the Lord is in, in His holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. He's aware of what's going on in your life, outside and inside. The Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He will rain down blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. For the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtues will see His face. As we come together today to worship God, and there seems to be such a hunger for worship in this place today, it's the same hunger I experienced, you know, I, I, I sensed last Friday night when we had the, um, when we had the outpouring. It seems to be just, a, just an overflow. Understand this, the God that we worship, He's still the one who's in control. He's still the one who's in control. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows what's go, what's, what, what you're going through. Okay? And he says, the virtues will see his face. You know that in Jesus Christ, you are virtuous. And as we, as we just give ourselves completely to the Lord in worship today, let's believe, and I believe that the Lord will reveal himself to you in a special, special way. And you will, you will see his face. So I'm going to ask the worship team once again to just lead us in this song. After which you, you, can, you can continue on. And then we're going to be having communion. But join us this morning. Those of you who are here, those of you who are joining us online, don't just be a spectator. I invite you. Okay? Get involved. Join us as we worship the Lord today. Because we will see His face in this time. Thank you. 
your voice it thunders there is none like you vice you vice like fire. you're beautiful jesus you're beautiful jesus your voice it thunders there is none like you and only jesus and only song is really close to my heart. Let's keep playing. Um, some of my good friends actually wrote this song and it carried me through so much. There's a season of my life where I actually lived in northern Iraq for three months, serving with refugees and for, for a time, we were just like the most tired people, pouring out our guts to the Lord, pouring out our guts to these people who needed Jesus. And you know, it was, it was hot there at that point in time. We were like sweating while we were sleeping. We were asking, God, why are we even here? We're not even seeing any fruit. What's the point of all of this? But Jesus was like, look at me. Look how worthy am I? Am I not worthy of your own life? Am I not worthy of the blood, sweat, and tears? Maybe for some of us here, we're tired. It's like, we're, we're, we're like done with COVID. We're done with the economic downturn. We're like, God, what's the point of even going to church? What's the point of going to Bible study? What's the point of praying? What's the point of reading our Bibles? because he's worthy he is worthy he is worthy just like in heaven those four creatures with eyes all around their bodies trying to get a glimpse of his glory crying out holy 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 come on sing hallelujah in hallelujah we join in with heaven Singing out of your song in hallelujah. We join in with Holy Jesus and only Jesus and only. Come on, sing it out from your heart. Worthy of praise. And only Jesus, and only Jesus, and only Jesus is worthy to see you while you live. Sing it out. Come on, sing it out. Shining in the light of your glory. Hallelujah. Join us as well. Pour out your power in love and as we sing holy, Come on, sing it out from the bottom of your heart holy, To see you I am lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power 
Come on. Let's we sing holy, Come on. holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up. Sing it till heaven hears it. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Jesus, to see you, you live. You are holy, Jesus, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power as we see. Only Jesus, no, the Jesus, no, the Jesus is worthy of praise. You are the one, Lord. And only Jesus, and only Jesus, and only Jesus is worthy of praise. And only Jesus, and only Jesus, and only Jesus is worthy of praise. You believe that this morning, that only Jesus is worthy of praise? Come on, if you do that, you give him praise. Give him a shout of praise. Even those of you who are watching right now, just let us know that you're joining us. Just lift up your hands and give him a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Turn to somebody and say, only Jesus. Only Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We're going to be um, partaking of the elements of communion today. As we remember the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ for us, a willing sacrifice. We remember his death, his suffering, and his death. You know, it's important to remember that nobody took his life from him, he gave it. He says, I willingly, I am the good shepherd, I willingly lay my life down for the sheep. He lay his life down. He gave his life for you. Nobody had to force him to do it. Nobody had to point a gun at his head for him to do it. He did it because of his love for us. And the worship that we bring him is really, it's, a, it's small, it, you know, it's, it's not even enough, really. Because we are so limited. And he is so infinite. And yet, he accepts it because he knows it comes from the bottom of our hearts. You can just feel, you know, get, get the elements of communion ready this morning for you. The cup and the, and the wafer. Hallelujah. 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 I'd like just to invite all of you to just bow your heads. Just close your eyes for a moment. And just thank Jesus. Just thank Him for the sacrifice. Thank Him for His willingness. To die for us. Hallelujah. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus, he took some bread. He gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it in pieces. 
and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Let's partake of the bread. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. Let's partake of it. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you are to us and everything that you have been to us, O oh Lord God. We thank you that we are safe, we are healthy, that we are here today able to worship you in this place in freedom. And for this, O oh Lord God, we truly appreciate you. And we thank you for the work that you are doing in all our lives, O oh God. For the grace that continues to abound, for your grace that continues to abound in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for that. We thank you that when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we remember just how loved we are. Just how precious we are. To you just how much you value us and Lord we just we just lift up our hands to you Lord God and our hearts in total gratitude Lord We'd like to take some time out right now to pray for who for, for, for many of us is the country of our birth. We pray for the Philippines that just got hit by a typhoon, Lord God. Although it dissipated in power and in strength, it still has affected some areas of the Philippines, areas where some of our brethren are from, where we have churches in. Oh Lord and right now we really don't know what is going on and what the condition is we just know Lord God that there was you know there was some sort of devastation that happened and so we pray for grace at this point in time for these regions that have been affected by that particular typhoon Oh Lord God I thank you that my family is safe there Oh Lord God my father, my sister, they're all safe there, Lord God, but I know that others have been affected. Some of our churches may have even been affected, oh Lord God, and we just want to lift them up to you in prayer. We ask, oh God, for your hand of blessing and your hand of grace to be upon them. Lord, if anybody's been hurt or in need right now there, just provide for them like you always do, oh Lord. So we thank you. We thank you. And we commit to you, Lord God, the rest of this morning's worship service. And we ask, oh Lord God, that you would just be with us. Take us by the hand and lead us, Lord God. We lift up to you our North Campus that's meeting right now, Lord and we just ask, oh Lord God, that you would just bless them as you have blessed us today as well. Lord, we know that we are in the banqueting table today that you prepare for us in the presence of our enemies. 
and that you will bless us this morning. So I thank you, Lord God. I pray for your people today, those of you, those who are watching and those who are here today. They have come, O oh Lord God, to worship you, but many of them have burdens that they are carrying right now, Lord. Burdens that only you are able to lift. Needs that only you are able to meet, Lord God. And they need your grace and they need your power in their lives at this point in time. Some of them need to be comforted, Lord God. Holy Spirit, would you come and put your arms around them and let them know that they can lean on you for strength and for encouragement, O oh Lord. Some are in need of a miracle, Lord God, a miracle of provision, a miracle of healing, O oh Lord. We continue to declare that you are our way maker. You are our miracle worker. And this we pray on behalf of your people who are in need right now, Lord God. So we thank you. We thank you that we have this wonderful blessing of being able to pray, O oh Lord, and commune with you. And take us by the hand once again today, Lord God, and just lead us. And Father, after everything has been said and done, to you we will give the glory, to you we will give the honor, and to you we will give the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody will say, Amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, worship team. We appreciate your your uh, your ministry today it was wonderful wonderful time of worship we just had um you know i just sensed that it was going to be an overflow how many of you were here with us last friday hey how many of you were here with us last friday maybe here in person or you joined us online what a powerful powerful time of prayer of worship and of intercession you know it was just it, it was just awesome um time went by so fast you know, we started at a little past seven, and um, the next time I opened my eyes, I think it was almost ten. And it was just a powerful, powerful time. The Holy Spirit just took play, just took over, and um, just um, did a powerful, powerful work in the lives of everybody that were here. And um, we will be holding more of this, but we just like to announce as well, as I announced last Sunday, because I don't think we have it in the announcements is that, um, you know, um, a couple of months ago, some of the leaders here, myself and some of our ministry team and um, board members, we started a Saturday morning, I'm going to call it the Saturday special, okay? From 9 to 10 in the morning, sometimes we go a little over, we just come together here in this place, okay, for a time of worship and prayer, okay? Intercession, however the Holy Spirit just leads us in praying, um, we have one, there's no agenda, there's no program, basically, okay? We don't have a list or whatever. There's no agenda, there's no program. Um, people who come, you know, we listen to the Lord and um, we, we pray, we worship. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're open to that and if you want to become part of this intercessory ministry, we'd like to invite you to come, really. It's set, we, we hold it on Saturday mornings from 9 to 10. Sometimes we go a little, we, we go a little over we come with masks, um, with shields, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of space so we can accommodate it. There's just one song leader who leads us. Sometimes it's um, the head of our worship ministry, Carmela, or sometimes it's, um, it's Pastor Bruno who leads us in worship. But you know what? Um, I can't think of a, of a better way to, to, to spend a Saturday morning sometimes, okay? And you know, if it's husband and wife from 9 to 10 after 10, you know, go out, husbands, take your wives for brunch. Or something, or wives, take your husbands out for brunch, okay? But, you know, you can come, we, we, we'd love it. You know, we're, normally I'm here by between, uh, I'm here between 8.30 and 8.45 in the morning. 
So if you want to come and just spend a little more time, personal time with the Lord, you are more than welcome to come and join us for that, okay? So we have a name to, for that. We're going to call it the Saturday Special, okay? So um, we just hope that, you, you know, you, everybody's invited to come and join us for that. We're opening it up to the, to the rest of the congregation. Also, we'd like to inform you, before I go to the ministry of God's Word, that um, last, um, last, this week, just this week, okay, uh, a few days ago, received a letter from, um, from our, um, from the Alberta, the, um, a letter that was sent to the faith leaders of Alberta from Dr. Dina Hinshaw, um, basically confirming to us and informing us that um, it is possible for us to have children's ministry already. Um, there are certain guidelines that we will follow, so, so we're going to inform you. We're talking to Pastor, um, we're, we're discussing it with Pastor Richard right now, Pastor Richard Banag. Pastor Richard is going to be discussing it with the teachers on how we're going to be able, how, on how we're going to be implementing it. Okay, because there are, there are going to be certain safety protocols that are still in place, but we will be able to minister to children now, okay, and have, and have some. We do know that our kids miss the Sunday school. They really do, okay. And um, so we're, we're going to try to hopefully by, by this November, we're going to be, um, we're going to be starting this already, um, and we will let you know when. Okay, we will let you know when. Uh, at, at present, we probably have about two rooms that we're going to use, and um, so we will, um, we will let you know. And also, I believe for the young people ministry, they're going to be starting up again their um, in-person worship service, or their in-person meetings here. And I do know that once that is set or whatever, Bruno's going to be, Pastor Bruno's going to be communicating with the parents and with everybody, and we're going to be announcing it here. You know, yeah, yeah the pandemic is still here, the virus is still be here, is still here, but you know what? Let's, let's not allow ourselves to be defeated by what's happening, yeah? Let's continue to move on. Let's continue to, you know, let, 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 we will be wise, okay? We will be wise. We will make the necessary protocols or whatever, but we recognize as well that people need to be with people. The church, you know, you know, when Jesus, the, the, the New Testament says, let us, right? Let us. And that means that our faith was meant to be practiced. Our faith was meant to be lived in the context of a congregation, in the context of a community, okay? So um, we're going to try to, we're going to, we're going to be trying to do that down, you know, down the road. Okay, so anyway, let's go, to, um, let's go to the ministry of God's Word this morning. And um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 6. We continue our Kingdom, Kingdom Life series, okay? Uh, we took a break last, uh, for the last couple of weeks uh, with Brother Joseph here um, preaching, did a fantastic message here Sunday, you know, one Sunday morning. And then um, that was the Sunday I was in, um, I was in Edmonton for the anniversary. Um, last week I was here. Um, I preached on, an, on another message that the Lord just basically laid upon my heart to speak to the congregation on trusting God. But we're going to be continuing our study on the Sermon on the Mount, okay, on the Kingdom Life series. And if you want to know more about that, you know, all our sermons are, are, um, are recorded um, and they're placed on our YouTube channel. You can go to um, you can go to our website and look at a uh, click archives there for video, and you can catch them up. It's amazing. In which we, you know, you know that we had ten sermons just for Matthew chapter five. Ten sermons for Matthew chapter five. Five of them were specifically for the Beatitudes, and four or five of them, and the rest were the rest of uh, Matthew chapter 5. And it's going to take us probably into the new year, little by little, to complete, you know, this, this, this Kingdom Life series as we look at the Sermon on the Mount. Now, we're going to be looking at um, um, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, and then we're going to jump down to verses 16 to 18, Okay. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, you know, Jesus, Jesus is saying here, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do. 
blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, he says, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. Let's go down to verse 16. And when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled. So people will, ad will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face. Don't look miserable. Don't look hungry. Okay, or hangry. Okay. Then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. May God bless the reading of his word. I'm entitling my message today, It's About the Heart. It's about your heart. Turn to somebody and say, it's about your heart. If you're watching online, turn to, turn to the person beside you or whatever and say, it's about your heart. Okay, it's about your heart. To those of you who know me, know me well, you know that I have a few passions in life. Primary of this passion is my relationship with God. Okay. After which, my wife. By the way, we celebrate 29 years this November. Yeah. Okay. She is a saint. She has put up with me for 29 years. Okay. And then it's my kids, my family. And then it's a toss-up, really, the next passion between hooking and soccer. Because I love, I love to cook and I love soccer. I wish I could cook soccer so it would be all rolled up into one, but you can't, right? So anyway, and I've been following, you know, I've been following soccer for oh, several decades already. I do enjoy European soccer, watching, you know, the teams play. And um, several years ago, I came across the story of a very, very gifted soccer player from the country of Nigeria. His name, his name is Nwanku Kanu. You can, read, you, can, you, you, you can actually Google him. And um, he started playing professional soccer at about 16 to 17. Okay, yes. And um, he played for some of the most popular teams in Europe, some of the most famous teams and largest teams in Europe. However, early on in his career, they discovered something that almost curtailed his career as a professional soccer player. And that was they discovered that he had a congenital problem in his heart. Yeah, I think it was a hole in his heart. Okay. And he was hitting the peak of his career. And it was, you know, it was curtailed at that point in time, but because of the medical profession and medical advances, they were able to fix that hole in his heart, okay? And he was able to resume his career as a professional soccer player, and he played up to his, you know, up to his 30s, okay, in, um, in, 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 top, in, in top division. But can you imagine, okay, potential for earning, potential for fame and all that was almost hindered completely simply because of a minor problem in the heart. And by the way, if I'm not mistaken, he's a Christian. He is a brother in the Lord. Okay. 
You see, if the condition of the heart is not right, it can and it will affect life. You may have the largest muscles, the broadest shoulders, but if there's a problem in your heart, your life can and will be limited. There are certain things that you will not be able to do. If the condition of the heart is not right, it can and it will affect life. Now Jesus, in the passages that we read here, he talks to us about three important expressions of, in a sense, right, king, practical kingdom righteousness. Okay? Basically, these three things are what, are what we as citizens of the kingdom of God and followers of Jesus Christ should be, you know, should be practicing on a consistent basis. He talks, to, he talks to us about three habits or what you can call three spiritual disciplines. And these three spiritual disciplines or habits we must cultivate, okay, as kingdom people are charitable giving, prayer, and fasting. Habits or values that we have to develop if we are to become, if we want to become productive citizens of God's kingdom. Now, when we look at these three, okay, we look at prayer. As kingdom people, as citizens of the kingdom of God, as followers of Jesus Christ, okay, it's important for us to be people of prayer. Amen? Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Okay. That's why it's important to join the outpouring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the Saturday special if you want to, if you can. Okay. It, you know, it's, it, 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 we must seek to be people of prayer. Okay? Prayer must be an important component of our spiritual lives. Prayer unleashes the power of God upon our situation and upon that of others we pray for. Okay? Prayer moves the hand that moves the world, we are told. Prayer has a powerful means as well of bringing about transformation in our lives. And sometimes when we pray, okay, it is not situations that are transformed, but we ourselves are transformed when we spend time in the presence of God. Now fasting, we fast in order to conquer the flesh. We fast in order to communicate to the flesh that you have no power over us. What is more important is the things of the Spirit rather than the things of the flesh. Now fasting, okay, why? Because we are people of the Spirit and not of the flesh. Okay? Fasting is a key to our spiritual growth. And that's why every, every January we have a week-long fast here in the church. And we have prayer meetings every night to start off that year. Okay. But you know what? We need to do more fasting than feasting. Okay? And it's hard, especially with the holidays approaching. Okay? But fasting is essential. Okay? Fasting is a means as well for us to develop intimacy with God. Okay? Because fasting, when we fast, fasting opens us up to what the Spirit has to say to us. And now when it comes to alms or charitable giving, we are to be generous. Kingdom people are to be known for their generosity. Generosity towards God, generosity towards their needy fellow man, their needy brethren and their needy fellow man. Why? Because charitable giving shows the people the compassionate heart of the king of the kingdom. Okay? When we are generous to the needy, we show people that our king is concerned about them. So these disciplines or habits are important to our overall development and growth as kingdom people. We must cultivate these three pillars, if you want to call them that, these three important components of our spiritual lives. Okay? We must seek to develop in these areas. To become more and more men and women of prayer. To incorporate fasting 
into our lives, you know, into our regular, you know, into our regular routine and to be generous. Even in a time of need, even in a time of difficulties. But when Jesus said all these three things, okay, Jesus says something very, very important. Okay. Jesus says this, as important as these habits or disciplines are to the kingdom person, without the proper heart posture, these habits profit nothing. The heart, everybody say heart. You know what? If you're watching right now, put the heart emoticon there or something like that, okay? okay? Everybody say heart. Now, when we talk about heart here, we're talking about motives. The heart must be in the right place. Our motives for doing all these things must be in the right place place you see pharisaic judaism okay the predominant form of judaism that was you know that was present when jesus lived and walked in in you know in the promised land in israel during those 33 and a half years he was there okay pharisaic judaism was based upon three pillars okay these pillars were alms or charitable giving prayer and fasting, just to give you a short background of why Jesus said this. Okay? Now to them, to, these, to, to those who practiced this form of Judaism and made this, okay, the three pillars, okay, and these are good, okay? these are good disciplines, these are good values that we, you know, that we, that, that, that we must seek to cultivate. To those, who, to those who practice this very strictly and legally, you know, in a legalistic manner, the practice of these things marked out, marked one out as a true Jew. So in a sense, if you're not practicing these three things, you're not a real Jew. You're not a true Jew, okay? You are not part of God's, you know, God's elect. And, when, and they had a tendency to look down upon those who did not adopt or adapt these three, power, um, these three, these three values, or these three disciplines, or these three pillars. Okay. They had a tendency to look down on that. But the problem was this: the problem of the religious people of Jesus' day, okay, and sometimes even today, is they may have done the right things. But their hearts were in the wrong place. They did so, but the posture of their hearts was not right. Yes, they practiced generosity. Yes, they prayed. Yes, they fasted. But... It was for all the wrong reasons. It was not to honor God. It was not to bless people. It was to be recognized as somebody who was spiritual. And to enjoy the acclaim and the recognition of these people so they did these things not to bless but to impress okay. so their hearts were not right Consistently, you know, later on, what, what does Jesus say? Jesus does a quote from Isaiah where God says, These people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See? Now, Jesus strongly condemns. He condemns these public displays of religious acts 
where the intent is to garner praise and acclamation for oneself. So this should cause us to ask ourselves, to check ourselves, to look at ourselves in the mirror and to ask the question, why? Right? Why do I give? Why do I serve? Why do I do what I do? Is it because I want to express my gratitude and my love for God? Or is it because I want to impress those who are around me? Turn to somebody and say, it's about your heart. It's about your heart. The author of the NIV application commentary writes this. Unless prompted by the right motives, religious activities, including doing good deeds to others, are of no real spiritual value and receive no commendation from God. It does matter greatly why we do what we do. Listen, okay? It does matter greatly why we do what we do. So now I have to ask myself this question. I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm giving myself a hard time also. Now I ask myself the question, okay, why? Why do I put so much time into preparing, you know, why do I put in at least about 10 hours a week, 10 to 12 hours a week to prepare for a message on Sunday morning? Is it to express and to bless or is it because I want to impress? So I'm not simply challenging you to check your hearts. I'm challenging myself to check my heart as well. Why? Why do I want to see people come to Jesus Christ? Why do I want to see the church grow? And yes, I want the church to grow. Is it because I want to impress my fellow pastors or impress people? Or is it because I want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and I want to see his name lifted up? And that's, you know, and that's, and that's something. You see, Jesus... In Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and you can go back to this, but I have it up here, but I like to read it from the Passion Translation. Okay? Jesus says this, okay? and I like the way the Passion Translation puts it. It says, examine your motives to make sure you're not showing off when you do your good deeds, only to be admired by others. Otherwise, you will lose the reward of your heavenly Father. So, he says, when you give to the poor, don't announce it. And make a show of it just to be seen by people, like the hypocrites in the streets and in the marketplace. They've already received their reward. And what is Jesus saying here? Motive is more important than simple activity. Because God looks at the heart. God is concerned at the heart. If your heart is in the right place, guess what? You will do the right things. And they will impress God. They will bless God. But you can do the right things and yet have your heart in the wrong place. And God's not impressed at all. He's not going to be blessed at all. And he uses a very strong word here. He uses the word hypocrite. Nobody likes to be called a hypocrite. Right? A hypocrite is somebody with a false face. Okay? Hypocrites. And the original meaning here was that of an actor, to describe an actor, somebody who was a performer on stage. Someone who played a role in front of a crowd. They took on an, another persona. 
they took on a role that was not really them. You know, during those days, if I'm not mistaken, most of the, most of the acting, most of the stage performing was done by men. So there, were, there would be men who would dress up as women and who would play the role of a woman, a, wo a woman, even though they were a man. So they would take on a role that was not really them. Now this word eventually evolves to describe somebody who's got double standards. Someone who may do the right things, but for all the wrong reasons. Their, their heart was not in the right place. Someone who wore a false face. And during those times, you know, in Greek tragedies, in Greek plays or whatever, they would even wear masks. Now, when we talk about spiritual hypocrites, because this is what Jesus is talking about here, spiritual hypocrites are play actors. They practice a false devotion. They practice a false piety or spirituality. They honor God with their lips, but their hearts are far from God. But that devotion, that piety, that spirituality is all external and it does not really manifest itself in a transformed heart. And this is the word that Jesus uses here. It's a powerful word. It's a strong word. It's a scary word. Because it challenges you and me today. We who serve God, we who worship God, you know, we who do what we do, we who are, who are devoted, you know, it challenges you and me today to ask the question, the big why, right? Why? Why do we come to church? Why do we read the Bible? Why do we serve in ministry? Why do we want to play up here in front? Why? Is it an expression of our faith, of our devotion our, our gratitude towards God, is it an expression of a desire to bless God, to honor Him, or is it simply because we want to impress? Right. Oh, people, we still have two more chapters of the Sermon on the Mount to go. I think I lost a few more viewers. Yeah, I think I did. Okay. So the question for you and me is this. What is the posture of our hearts? Right? Why do we do what we do as followers of Jesus Christ? Why do we serve? Why do we minister? Why do we give? Why do we come to church? Why do we pray? Why do we fast? Right? Why do we have to post on social media, I'm on the 45th day of my fast? Hashtag spiritual. Hashtag higher than heaven, right? You see, our goal should be to bless. Everybody say bless. Our goal should be to bless, not to impress. Okay. Our goal should always be to bring honor to God in all that we do, not to bring honor to ourselves. Our goal is to make Jesus famous, not to make ourselves famous. Okay. And that's why Jesus says, don't announce it. He says, keep quiet. Don't announce it when you give to the poor, he says. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, he says. When you pray, pray in private, right? When you fast as much as possible, don't advertise your fasting by your sorry face, right? 
you know. So stay out of Twitter and stay out saying, you know, so hungry after seven days of fasting. Right? Right? Okay? And don't post that picture, okay, of you with your Bible, your pen, and your coffee. Don't post it on Instagram. Don't post it on Facebook. Right? Unless your goal is to bless. But sometimes there's a fine line. And if we're not careful. Right? I mean, Jesus says, okay, you know, let, let, let's look at some of the things Jesus said. Okay, let's look at some of the things Jesus said. He says, okay, don't let your, you know, in this part, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Okay. This is simply a figure of speech for giving with pure motives. He says, when you give, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give with pure motives. Give not, you know, when you give, give not to be seen and to be applauded by others. Why? Because, you know, give purely for the motive of helping those who need to be helped and glorifying God. That should be our motive. Okay? Give to bless. To bless God, to bless the heart of God, to put a smile on His face, okay? And to put a smile on the face of the people we help. Don't give in order to get applause so that the applause puts a smile on your face. And then he goes on to say, you know, in, in, in verse 16, it is interesting. It says, he says, you know, these people who fast, these hypocrites who fast, they say, they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. You know, somebody, somebody actually said that sometimes they would put saffron on their faces. You know, and I cook with saffron. You know, when you want to make a really good paella, you can't do it without saffron. Okay. Why? Because saffron adds that yellowy color to the rice. Okay. So they would put saffron, they would put makeup on their faces, saffron, to make their faces look yellowish and appear sickly and sorrow. In order that when they walk through the streets or whatever, you know, people would say, oh, how spiritual that person is. I wonder how, how many days... He's been fasting already. Look, he looks, he looks really jaundiced. Right? Wow. Wow. Spiritual. Hashtag holy. Right? Hashtag holy. Right? And then in, in, in Matthew chapter 6 verse 5, Jesus says, when you pray, pray in private. Don't pray like the hypocrites. They want to be seen by others. The Greek word, the Greek word here is where we get the word theater. Okay? So in a sense, Jesus was describing people who were like actors giving a performance upon a stage, basically self-promoting themselves, self-promotion. You see, my friends, true devotion avoids any form of self-glorification or self-promotion. True devotion, true kingdom devotion, okay? The devotion of the one who belongs to the kingdom of God. The devotion of the one whose heart has been transformed by the Spirit of God never seeks to call attention to themselves through the things that they do. The goal is always to glorify God. The goal is always to point people to Jesus Christ. You know, I heard about this one time, okay? On social media, a self-proclaimed prophet who through social media wanted to give a word to everybody. But he starts it with saying, after coming, you know, I, I've just come out of nine hours of prayer I says huh why announce the nine hours in prayer what's the point behind announcing that right I mean sometimes it's you know is it self-promotion self-glorification is it to add validity to what what you feel that you have to say 
Is the goal to bless or is the goal to impress? Because I want you to listen to this, okay? I want you to listen to this. To practice your faith in order to bring, bring glory to yourself is nothing short of idolatry. You are idolizing yourself. You are worshiping yourself, not God. Let me repeat this. When you practice your faith in order to bring glory to yourself, you are practicing idolatry. That's why, please be careful with social media. Yes. You know... The devil has turned much of society into an absolute narcissistic society simply because of social media, you know, using social media. So sometimes when we post these acts of devotion, you know, or piety, going to church, you know, quiet time. You know, I'm all, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If the goal, if the actual goal is to point people to the Lord, if the actual goal is to encourage a pursuit of God, okay? However, if it is to garner praise or attention to oneself, it becomes unrighteousness. And it is something that must be repented of. You're picking this up today. Okay? True, okay, true kingdom righteousness is not giving for your own glory. It is not praying for your own praise. It is not fasting for your own fame. It is not giving for your own glory. It is not praying for your own praise. It is not fasting for your own fame. Hallelujah. You see, friends, our goal, our goal is a heavenly reward, reward not an earthly one. Okay. It's heaven, it's not earth. Our goal is the applause of heaven, not the applause of earth. You know, Max Lucado writes a book entitled you know, the applause of heaven. That's our goal. The applause of heaven, not the applause of earth. And Jesus says this very directly when he says, if all you are concerned about, in these three passages, very directly, if all you are concerned about is impressing people, they may be impressed, but mind you, that's all the reward you're going to get. This. And you're going to miss out on the more important rewards. But if you do the right things with the right heart, you will indeed be blessed. If the posture of your heart is correct towards God, is right towards God, you will indeed be blessed. Three times. In this passage, in verses 4, 6, and 18, three times Jesus says, Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. God sees. Okay? He not only sees what you do, he sees why you do it. And when he sees the correct posture of your heart, that why you do what you're doing is because of your desire to bless and not impress, he says, Jesus says, you need not be afraid of missing out. Because God sees everything and will reward you accordingly. He sees what you do in secret. Listen to this. He sees what you do in secret. But listen to this. He will reward you publicly. 
the reward that he releases to you, it's not going to be secret. It's going to be public. So don't be afraid of not being honored by man. Because the Bible tells us in John chapter 14 or 12, it says, God honors those who serve him. Jesus' words himself. Now, what would you rather be? Would you rather be honored by man or honored by God? Right. Would you rather hear the well done of man or the well done of God? And when God rewards, it's not just a future reward. Sometimes it can be a present reward. It can be an in-time reward rather than just an, an eternal reward. Let's understand something, okay? Let's understand that God's not impressed about what others think of us. He's not even impressed by what we think of ourselves. Okay. God will reward good deeds when they are based on the pure motives of the heart. So, do not trade the goal of pleasing the Father with the trivial an idolatrous goal of impressing or pleasing people. At the end of the day, the end of my life, when I stand before my Creator, there's nothing more precious to me. There's nothing that's going to be more precious to me than having Jesus put his arms around me and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter now into your rest. That's what I live for. And that's what Jesus invites us to live for. Not the applause of men, but the applause of heaven. Amen? You want that too? You want that too? Come on, give the Lord praise if you want that too. Do not trade the goal of pleasing the Father with the trivial and idolatrous goal of impressing or pleasing people. It's all about the heart. A husband and wife were I'll close with this. A husband and wife were discussing the possibility of taking a trip to Israel. And the husband was this bombastic type of person. Okay. So he says, honey, wouldn't it be really fantastic that when we go to the Holy Land, you know, we go up Mount Sinai and shout the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai. Yeah, wow, and we can say that, you know, think about that, what, how it would look on social media. You know, whoa, you know, let's take a video of it, you know, let's go live. Actually on Facebook Live or whatever, you know. And the wife replies, you know, honey, it would be better if we stayed at home and kept those Ten Commandments. Turn to somebody and say, it's about the heart. Okay. It's about the heart. So again, the question is, you know, a question we must ask ourselves, not just now, but on a regular basis. You know, is are our hearts are in the right place in relation to the Lord? Are we doing the right things? with the right motives. And you know, the wonderful thing is this. God is a fixer of hearts. Okay. He's a fixer of hearts. You know, just like that, just like that young, that young professional soccer player was able to resume his career because 
The doctors fixed his heart. God is able to deal with our hearts and fix our hearts. All we really need to do is come to him and say, Lord, fix my heart. I don't think it's really in the right place right now, Lord. So could you do some surgery, spiritual surgery on my heart and fix it? Because I want to do the right things for the right reasons. I'm done trying to impress people. I'm done trying to look holy. I actually want to live holy. And I want to bless you. Because at the end of the day, at the end of my life, when the time comes, I want to see your arms around me. And I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter now into your rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to invite you now to just bow your heads to close your eyes this morning. The Holy Spirit is here today. These next few moments, when we're, 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 we're little, you know, we, we, we'll try to finish by, we'll, we'll try to finish by 12, but the Holy Spirit is here right now. And He's here, He's where you are at this point in time, wherever it is that you're joining us from. So I'd like to invite you to take, you know, to just, just, just allow the Holy Spirit to do some heart surgery within you right now. Change my heart, O God. Make it ever true. Show me, Lord. You who are the revealer of hearts, reveal my heart to me. And show me where it is. And God, if it's in the wrong place, if the posture of my heart is not in the right place, O oh God, I come to you now in repentance. I acknowledge that. And Father God, would you repair that broken heart? Would you repair that wounded heart? Would you heal that sinful heart right now? And just talk to him right now. Let's just worship the Lord now. My heart you want to stand up, you want to sit down, you want to worship the Lord, just allow the Holy Spirit to move you right now. song once again as a prayer. Purify my heart, let it be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let it be as 
as gold, pure gold, refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, my master, a true suit. Father, that's our prayer today. God, that is our prayer today. We know it's a question of the heart, O oh Lord God, and it's all about our heart. God, and if we have done any, if we have tried to do anything with the wrong motive, O oh Lord God, if we have sought self-promotion or self-glorification, Lord God, if we have, if we have sought to live our Christian lives in order to impress those around us. God, we come to you today in repentance. And Father, we come to you and we ask, oh Lord God, change that heart. Change that heart. We no longer want to live that way. We no longer want to live for the applause of man. We seek the applause of heaven. We're no longer interested in being honored by man. We seek to be honored by you, Lord God. And help us. We yield ourselves to you today, God. And we pray, O oh Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will just help us. Holy Spirit, help us. Because you're the only one that can do so. So we thank you, we praise you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, yes. Give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're, um, we're now going to be showing the giving video for those of you who are interested in finding out how you can support the ministry. Um, again, on, um, on behalf of the leadership, we thank you. We ask that you stay online with us because we do have some important announcements to make towards the end of the service. Okay, after which, after the giving video, we're going, I'm going to have um, Gabe come up here to just pray and um, to give us the announcements um, as well. God bless you all for your faithfulness and your generosity towards the Lord in giving.
Hello everyone, what's up? My name is Gabe and I have some juicy announcements for y'all. Uh, announcement number one, November 14th for the men and ladies. Ladies are invited apparently. So we are having our Stepping Up Men's Conference plus ladies. If you don't see that in brackets, it's not there. But ladies are invited. Um, we have an amazing uh, panel of speakers to talk about stepping up as, um, as leaders, stepping up as fathers, and I believe uh, mothers can learn a good deal on this too, and stepping up as husbands and wives. I know y'all want your husbands to step up, so come on out. Um, we're going to step up together. Um, announcement number two, we have a welcoming party November 28th. Uh, for those who are new to our church, we welcome you guys. We love you guys already. And um, yeah, come on out. More announcements will be, more details will be um, put out next week. And one last announcement. Uh, announced this morning, Saturday specials. Come on out Saturdays at 9 a.m. And we're going to partner with heaven and pray for our city, pray for whatever is on the Lord's heart. Um, so come on out. There's no better way to know the Lord than to ask for his heart. And as a community, I want to do that together with y'all. And yeah, let's be the church that God has called us to be. Amen. 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 All right. Pastor Andoni. Yeah, thanks, Gabe. Why don't we just all stand this morning again? You know, um, I think I, I just received the message to this morning. Uh, we weren't able, but um, our um, our men's the the, the 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 conference, the men's conference, is going to be an on-site and an online. Um, we, we we do have our brethren from you know we're inviting our, our brethren from uh, um, Sherwood Park and Edmonton who are going to be joining us, and I believe even our church in Nova Scotia are going to be joining us for that. But we're going to be having it online as well, and there's going to be a registration. If I'm not mistaken, the registration is going to be through um, our Facebook page and Instagram. Um, you can register through that, um, and we will be giving you more information. So we're, um, all the protocols are going to be practiced, and um, it's really going to be a maximum of probably 70 people who can come and join us for that particular morning here, but you can join us online. It's going to be through Zoom, and through um, through Facebook Live, through Facebook Live as well. Okay, with the with the welcome party, we will give you uh, more concrete information as to what the how it's going to look like probably by um, by next week. Okay, so turn to somebody and say, "It's about your heart." It's about your heart. Okay. But Healthy hearts. Okay, hearts that are in the right place in relation. To God okay so just lift up your hands for the benediction this morning uh, thank you all for coming you know if you're joining us still watching lift up your hands as well as an act of faith on your part the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace we thank you, Father, for everything. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We thank you, O oh God, that when we leave this place, we leave under an open heaven. We leave, O oh Lord God, enveloped in your love and in your grace. We leave not as victims, but as victors, as conquerors. We leave not cursed, but blessed in Jesus name we leave not sorrowful but joyful and the joy of the Lord becomes our strength we thank you we praise you we bless you in Jesus name we pray and everybody will say amen amen Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all, congregation. Thank you very much for joining us on site and online. Have a good rest of this Sunday. 
And may I, I know the Lord will bless you this week with the blessings of heaven. Go with God and know this, God, He goes with you as well. God bless you all. We'll see you next Sunday. If you want to join next Sunday service in the north or in the south, you can begin, you know, you can even, you can make your reservations already, I believe, starting tonight or starting tomorrow morning. God bless you all. We'll see you next week.